Hello everyone, and today we're going to be painting these calibers on this 2020 Mustang to match the paint color of this beautiful Kona Blue. So let's get started. And for our first step, let's go ahead and grab our 21mm socket and our breaker bar, and let's go ahead and loosen up the lug nuts. The whole idea is we want to loosen them up before we jack up the vehicle. So there's one, there's two, there's three, four, and five. And then we'll go ahead and roll the jack under the vehicle so we can lift it up. And we're going to go ahead and do one wheel at a time. So once we loosen up the lug nuts, we'll lift that side up. Go ahead and put a jack stand under it. And as soon as I can get it aligned, and there we go. And then I'll gently lower it down. And once that's secure, we'll move on to the other three wheels. And now that we have all four wheels lift off the ground, let's finish removing the lug nuts and the wheels. So I'll use my 21 millimeter socket and remove the rest of the lug nuts. So there's four and there's five and I'll set those aside. And I'll see if I lift this up. There we go. And we'll just roll this right in the grass. And just to show you what we're working with, this is what it looks like with all four jack stands under the vehicle. And we have easy access to all four brake calibers. That's the whole idea. So that way we can do this job all in one smooth cycle. Because you're going to go from one brake caliber to the next when painting this. So now we can jump right into the prep work. Let's go ahead and grab some brake cleaner. And let's go ahead and spray off all the brakes. The whole idea is we're going to do a little bit of pre-cleaning just to break away some of that dust or debris or even some of that grease that's on the brakes themselves. This will help in the brushing process later on. And I'm also using my hand as a guard just so I don't spray too much on the rubber boots or hoses. And that should finish up the rear, so let's move on to the front. Now just something to keep in mind, these brakes are not too old. This is on a 2020 Mustang, so these are in fairly good shape. They're just a little bit dirty. Now in an older vehicle, you're probably going to require a little bit more prep work and spraying just to remove a lot of dirt and road dust that's been caked on for so many years. And then we'll go ahead and clean up the driver's side as well. And now that we have the first layer of dust removed, let's grab our brake cleaner that came with the G2 kit and our steel wire brush, which is a pretty good hefty size. And let's go ahead and start hosing this down and brushing it just to break away any of that dust or debris that's really embedded in the brakes. This is where all the prep work counts. So be prepared, this could be the longest step out of the whole process. Now with all the paint surfaces clean, we can set up our drop cloth. Now this is a pretty big drop cloth, it's one of these 9 by 12s so I'm going to stretch it out about 2 feet, grab my scissors, and I'm going to cut off about 2 feet. I don't need much. Now for those who don't have this, you can use a trash bag or any plastic you have laying around, but since I had one of these extra drop cloths, I decided to just cut it down and use this. And we're going to wrap it around the rotor just so we don't get any paint on it and get any paint anywhere else. And we'll just go ahead and tuck it behind. There we go. So now we're ready to go ahead and tape off our boundaries, and I'm going to pick this one little area right here. So I'm going to tape right here and then back. This will create a nice little cutoff for where we start and stop our painting. This is what it looks like after we did all four wheels. You can see a good amount of tape, and I even use index cards to kind of isolate between the clips and the brake calibers themselves. And as we move to the front, we did something similar. We went ahead and taped off the brake pad area. We don't want any paint on that or any of the pins, as well as we put a little bit of tape around the bleeder valve so it's nice and clean. And the same thing on the other side as well, passenger side, nothing different. I just went ahead and made sure I used an excess amount of tape so that plastic doesn't rub up against the caliber as we're painting it. The last thing you need is plastic sticking up against it as you're brushing it on there. And again, same thing on the back, looks pretty good. 
use those index cards just to isolate between the clips and the brake calibers and it came out looking pretty good. And now that we knocked out the hardest part, let's do one last cleaning. So grab your brake cleaner and do a light spray right over your brakes. And then we'll take a microfiber cloth and wipe it down. The whole idea is any oils left in your hands during the prepping process, we're going to remove this on this one last step before we apply the paint. And take your time, make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so now we're getting to the fun part. So here's our G2 paint. This is our Kona Blue. And then we have our hardener or also our reactor. And then we have our little bag that came with it. We'll open it up and we'll go through it. So we have a nice little paintbrush, something simple. And then what else we have? And it should be, yep, a little wooden stir stick. So let's go ahead and crack open this paint, see how it looks. And all you need is a flat screwdriver. And look at that. That is a beautiful dark blue. That looks awesome. So we'll go ahead and take our reactor right here, give it a nice little shake, open her up, and let's go ahead and pour the whole thing in right into our paint. And there we go. Let's try not to spill it. Looks pretty good. Then we'll take our stir stick and we'll go ahead and stir this up really good. This is definitely a step you don't want to cut corners on, so make sure it's mixed up nice and well. If not, the paint's not going to look right. Five minutes later. And after five minutes have passed, we're going to take our stir stick and mix it up one more time. There we go. And now we can start the painting process. This is the moment of truth. So all you have to do is grab your paintbrush and your paint can, and I'll apply a little bit of paint on the brush. So I'm going to wipe down any excess paint, and we're going to apply very thin coats. The thinner, the better. So every time you apply a coat, make sure it's nice and thin. You don't want to just glop it on. And when one side of the brush is done, flip it over to the other side. And as the first caliber is drying, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one, and we're going to complete a full circle around the whole vehicle. And now that we completed all four of the calibers, now we're back to the first one again for our second coat. And you're supposed to wait 15 minutes in between coats. Luckily, it took exactly 15 minutes to get back to the next one. Now, keep in mind, this is only the second coat. I do four total, but they're not on camera because the battery did die in the middle of the second coat. Two hours later. And four coats later and two hours have passed. Now we start removing all our drop cloth and our painter's tape. And this is where you're going to start seeing the fruits of your labor because you're looking at your finished product going, wow. Now, keep in mind, the paint is setting. It's not fully cured yet. It's going to take a full 24 hours to cure and level out. But it should start seeing what it's kind of look like right at this point. And I'm being very careful right now trying to move this painter's tape and not scratch it. Now, also keep in mind, if there's pitting, which there is on these calibers, you're going to see these imperfections. It's not going to level out and look like a perfect glass finish. So as I take this plastic off, you're going to see a little bit of dimples and divots. That's because these calibers have imperfections in them and it's going to show through the paint. And also keep in mind, it also depends on your technique. If you glob on thick, ugly coating, it's going to show. So you're going to have to do nice, thin, even coats throughout this whole process. And I was very happy with this can of G2 overall. I was enough to do four coats and still have a little bit left over. And now that we have all the tape removed, let's go and do a walk around just so you can see what I see. And overall, I think this came out looking really good. They're not perfect glass finishes, but it came out nice and smooth. And it actually looks better than obviously a hunk of rust when it's all said and done. But overall, I think it looked pretty good. And for the labor, it came out very nice. And looking at this, yeah, they look really good. I love how it matches the paint. It really makes the car pop. I might have to put like a white pony in there later just so it really stands out. And now that we're completely done with the painting process, let's go and install all four wheels and lug nuts. So all we have to do is just tighten these all up, make sure they're nice and snug before we drop it down and torque it to spec. And I'm just using a 21 millimeter socket just so they're nice and snug as much as possible. And now that we have all four wheels installed, let's go ahead and raise the vehicle up just a little bit, remove our jack stands, and then lower it down as gently as we can. And for our very last step, let's go ahead and torque our lug nuts down to 150 foot pounds. So there's one, two, Three, four, and five. 
24 hours later. Well, overall, I think these brakes came out looking really good. I love how it matches the Kona Blue. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.